morning. Good morning, Mr. Ray. Glad to see you all here. Hope everybody's excited about the 4th of July. And uh, hope you'll celebrate in some kind of way and give thanks uh, to this beautiful country that we live in. And all of those who have sacrificed uh, through the years uh, to make this country what it is today. It's going to be different today. I hope everybody got an opportunity to get some food. And thanks to all those who have brought uh, food uh, today. And uh, probably enough for people to take home if they want to when it's over here. So, anyway, we're glad to hear we hope you've silenced your phones and we prepare our hearts to worship. Our scripture comes from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 10. Verses 17 through 21. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords. He is a great God, the mighty and awesome God, who shows no partiality and cannot be bereaved. He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to the foreigners. For you, for you yourselves were once far as in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and worship Him and cling to Him. Your oaths must be in His name alone. He alone is your God, the only one who is worthy of your praise, the one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. Singing and eating, give that a try. <laughs> okay, let's stand, as, stand or not as we sing God of Our Fathers and God of the Fertile Fields and the tune of America. <laughs>
Psalms 145, 1 to 13. And it's a responsive reading, so you will need full things. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can tell. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mind, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all the generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our praise hymn is also known as the Navy hymn. If you'd like to stand, please do. and 1 John 4, 16 through 18. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So if the Son sets you free, you really will be free. And we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love and lives in God and God in them. There is, oh, sorry, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. This is the word of God for people of God. Thanks be to God.
For our third scripture lesson from Chronicles, please follow responsibly. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and restore their land. God bless America. Let us also remember the leaders of our nation, 
those who are called upon each day to make decisions that impact each of us. Be with them as they lead us. Give them your wisdom and let them know that we are praying for them. As we celebrate the history, government, and traditions of America, let us never forget that you have given us freedom from fear, freedom from sin, and freedom from death. Today we also pray for members of our congregation and others who need your touch. Delinda Kennedy, as she begins the final month of her chemo treatments. My incised friend, Lynn Stroud, as she begins intense treatments in preparation for a stem cell transplant. Canangela's mother, as she continues to recover from a fall and a stroke, isn't eating well and is struggling with adjusting to a rehabilitation facility. Fred Hopkins and his continuing medical concerns. Jossie Elliott as she heals from injuries suffered in an accident involving a glass door. Jane Jones with heart and kidney issues and pneumonia who is currently at Piedmont Rockdale. Cy and me and our family as we continue to process and deal with the sudden loss of Harvey last week and Pastor Cy as he continues to recover from COVID. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have given us and for the many freedoms we have as your beloved children. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Barbara, yes, um, I just got to my phone and got a text that Jane passed away this morning. Oh. Thank you. So let's all keep his family in our prayers through this week and as they process that loss. Thank you. <clears throat> Today's devotional reflection is on real freedom and God alone. When you think about the 4th of July, what comes to mind? Perhaps you think about a three-day weekend, Braves baseball, the Peachtree Road Race, Patriotic parades, cookouts and picnics, fireworks, American flags displayed throughout the community. The thing that I think about the most is freedom. We're blessed to live in the United States of America where we can voice our opinions freely, vote for the candidates of our choice, and worship the God of our own choosing. And we should never take those freedoms for granted. Amen. The American flag represents the freedom we enjoy and the lives of those who have died serving our country. My grandfather served in World War I. My father and uncle served in World War II. So I served in the Army for 14 years, and I retired from the Army in 2012 after 30 years of service. I have many friends who are still serving and friends who lost their lives while serving. Because of the contributions of our military in keeping us all free, many of us proudly display the American flag every day. Think about the American flag and all that it stands, and stands for and represents. It represents the greatest nation on this earth. It has been carried through centuries in battle. It is placed on the graves of our honored dead who fought for the right for us to remain a free nation and it flies high during peace times and during war. Old glory is its name. There is another real freedom each of us has, a freedom we can share and display every day of the year, our freedom in Christ, our freedom to live a life to glorify him so that his banner of love, truth, and peace can be seen by all. We are free to serve the creator of the universe, and that is true freedom. Romans 8.2 tells us, Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Contrast the world's definition of freedom with freedom in Christ. The world defines freedom as a life without any restraint. I can do anything I want to and say anything I want to say without anybody ordering me around. Everybody else may get burned by you, but you get to do it your own way. The world says you can have your freedom, but only by being totally selfish. God wants us to be free. When he opens doors, they are pathways to something good. 
But before God can get you to where he wants you to go, he has to get you out of the prison you are in. Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. The same holy power that opened Jesus' tomb will open the prison doors that are holding us back. This is real freedom. All we have to do is believe and trust God to show us the way and to provide for us. The Bible also tells us that the only way to true freedom is through Jesus. In John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, then you will really be free. Real freedom is freedom from fear, where you are truly free from guilt, worry, bitterness, and death. You are free to quit pretending because you are free to be yourself. And you can get rid of your fears by letting God love you. John tells us in 1 John 4, 18, that there is no fear in love. And perfect love drives out fear. When you realize how much God loves you, you will begin to live in true freedom. Just like the American flag represents freedom, Jesus is a banner over us protecting and shielding us and giving us true freedom. Let freedom ring out in your heart today. Our world is filled with hurting souls looking to be truly free. We know the way to that true freedom, and we have a story to share, our stories of freedom through Jesus. I'm going to end with the words from the chorus of contemporary Christian artist Chris Tomlin's version of Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Let us pray. Father God, Your Word tells us exactly how to find freedom in Christ. You don't leave us wondering how to experience the freedom that you offer. It begins with acknowledging our brokenness and admitting that we are slaves to sin. And it ends with choosing Jesus and following him daily. Only he can break the bonds of slavery and lead us to true freedom now and forever. Thank you for giving us this choice of eternal life. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Judge and Colonel. Please stand, everyone, as we close out the people meet the Lord. We can tell to the nations and the chorus of my nice, beautiful.